We hope to learn the tips about all manner of things from the incomparable Yo-Yo Ma. This is very comfortable. It is. Let's settle down for a lovely And they provided snacks, Yo-Yo. Oh. We have wombat chow. I shared some with uh, the wombat in the bathroom earlier on, and, and I was trying to entice him to come closer, but I think he was not really interested. So backstage on dressing room number two, it says Peter Sagal, and then on dressing room number one, it says the wombat. And and everybody is like rushing to see the wombat, and in comes Yo-Yo to see the wombat. And he goes in, and they're like, wombat, M Mr. Ma is here to see you, and the wombat doesn't care. But Yo-Yo goes in, and he, with no prompting from anyone, lies down on the floor of the dressing room bathroom to say hello to the That's wombat. getting a little too Look, personal. dude, you did it. If you don't want them to know, don't do it. All right. So I take a picture, and like all respecting, <laughs> self-respecting Americans, I immediately tweet it. <laughs> and I tweet it with the caption, Yo-Yo Ma on the floor of a bathroom with a wombat. <laughs> and even as you've been sitting here, thousands of people have been clicking on that link and going, oh my god, it is. <laughs> and some people came up with this joke, many people came up with this joke, because like, Solution to the best game of Clue ever. <laughs> so here we are. Um, there you this are. This is why Peter Sagel yes. is the man yeah. who is yeah, Peter Sagel. I don't know if there's an on switch for this, but hopefully, yes. This will be telling me what time it is. Um, here be the deal. I have a, a bunch of questions for you about your work uh, with the symphony and around the world. But my first question is, Sexiest man alive, really? Why do you look at me so quizzically? <laughs> Peter, no, I, I'm like, I thought we were buddies and we were going to agree that just for tonight, you're going to say, this is fine. You no, I'm go, impressed. You'll let it pass. But, I mean, why do you, why do you question that? No, I'm thrilled. <laughs> I'm thrilled. I, I, think, I think you, uh, you be named the people's sexiest man alive was a blow not only for classical music, but for men of our height, and I am... Listen, this, did, you didn't read the sidebar, it says, what? for wombats. For wombats, yes. The wombats find you There was a reason why I was lying on the floor next to the wombat, because we're <laughs> bonded together yeah, you are. in People magazine. He found you somewhat irresistible. Um, so tell me what you were doing last night. I missed you. Where were you? I missed you too. I hear you were doing some some really creative uh, <laughs> dancing. That's no, I was not. Yes, um, the chef was saying you were, yes. you know, doing some lovely gestures. But but I was. Uh, I think some of you may have seen at this wonderful space in Uptown called um, uh, alternatives? alternatives, and with these groups of young people, some break dancers and, and, and circus team people, and then I was with um, some civic orchestra members and, and members from Project Inclusion, and it was one of the best audiences you could have because everybody was so intensely involved in what was happening on stage, whether it's parents, friends, and, and what these kids were doing were amazing. Um, and this was, I guess, a, a community, uh, show. I guess this space is there for uh, for people to have a space, a safe place to do something that they're passionate about. Right. And um, and I have to tell you, Freddie, who is the break dancer, uh, I asked him, so you know, what are you thinking of when 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 you're doing this? He says, well, I'm thinking of taking out all the bad energy and putting in positive energy. I said, really? That's that's incredible. He says, well, and in addition to which. I want to acknowledge my my mentor, who's here, CJ, and and who came out and said because he taught me. Without him, I would not be here or in school. 
And I said, wow, Freddie, this is great. So what happens when you go to college? Are you going to continue to do break dancing? He says, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to be a choreographer, but actually I want to pass on what I learned. And this was like one of these really wonderful moving moments that, uh, that we get to see in doing this kind of work. And you see kids that are completely focused on being who they are, exploring the world, and, 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 uh, and then making a contribution. Um, you're in Chicago a lot. I mean, well, I like you. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. We're a likable town. Uh, I mean, it's like, but it's almost to the point where it's like we see you wherever we go. It's like the Cubs woo-woo guy over there, and there's Yo-Yo Ma playing the cello. It's... <laughs> but tell me, I, I'm, I'm curious about what, tell me about your, your, your gig, your specific job, if you will, with, with the CSO. Well, I think this is the way it happened. I love the town. I, too, love Chicago. Uh, it's, I mean, that's why you see me here all the time, because this is a town that has a very powerful will to do things that it believes in. And, and I think there's a spirit of collaboration that is uh, rare, and, um, and the big institutions like to talk to one another. Uh, they're funny people in town. And, uh, and, and, and so, and the Chicago Symphony has been a great friend over many years. But what I love about the CSO these days is that it has a strange combination of people. It has a music director who thinks that outside of, of music and his family, the things that are most important to him are children, the environment, and people in prisons. It has a senior staff who is totally devoted to thinking about the purpose of this huge, great, world-renowned cultural institution and its place in our present-day community, whether it's in the schools or whether in, in neighborhoods, whether in Pilsen, serving youth, serving five to nine-year-olds, serving three to five-year-olds, serving amateurs, just doing an incredible number of things. Uh, and this is all coming from both the young people of the CSO, the Civic Orchestra, as well as the senior staff. It's incredible to have an organization where everybody seems aligned to try and focus on, on these types of issues. Who wouldn't want to be part of this team? It's amazing to me that you went a good three minutes praising the CSO without mentioning yourself, even though I asked you. So I'm going to ask you again. What, sir, are you doing with the CSO? I, I think I... Uh, I will try to answer it once again, and it may take another three minutes. I like to work with people that are really committed to doing uh, things that are interesting. Well, let me try another way. You, 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 you've talked about yourself as, as a s citizen musician. What does that mean? Okay. Um, you're a tough Christian. I am. You are a pal. You know, I, I once helped his girlfriend in college. I mean, apparently, Peter said he introduced her to me. This is and true. Was trying to, you know, a date, right? And and supposedly it got him points. Usually it's the opposite. And it and did. now you give ask me tough questions. So I how do I repay that favor? I know. I'm a, I know. I'm a terrible this is person. this is how you a public humiliation. It's not good. Well, let's put it this way. I think that first of all. As a musician, uh, we're trained and we believe deeply that we work for something that's bigger than ourselves. So outside of the reason to practice, to have a kind of virtuosity on an instrument, uh, is so that we can transcend it and then be fully expressive and describe worlds. And it's sort of like a language of imagination. The language of imagination to bring empathy and more imagination into the world, for people to feel empathy for one another, for another time and place, for a person, a specific person, or an era. And this is what, um, uh, it's, it celebrates the inner life. And I think that the work in, for music and in culture is to do the kind of thing that's harder for uh, the other engines of, of society 
to do, politics and economics. Culture can deal with a very different time frame. It can deal with, with very strong memories and what memory attachments, it, it addresses issues. It may not cure cancer, but it actually helps people who are going through very difficult times. It helps people celebrate wonderful times, but it really also is a, is a healing thing. I think the work that I believe in doing, I think whether it's playing for regular audience or going to a children's hospital or going to Warrenville to, to, to a women's detention center, which Maestro Muti has done and CSO members have done many times, it's really to acknowledge another human being and, and that there can be a very direct communication uh, that is that is very often w without words. Do you find that you have to change the kind of music you play or the kind of experience you bring to different audiences? I mean, if you're going with uh, Maestro Muti to a woman's prison, do you bring a different program than you do, let's say, children or any other kind of group? I think you always meet people where they are in on a one you know on a on a uh, on a human basis in in Warrenville actually it's it's the young ladies that wrote their songs wrote their poetry and set it to music we helped set some of what they did to music and and played it with them um, so the the, the uh, I'm, I'm tricking you into talking about the work you do so they you're, you're sly I know I am so the, funny the, the, and the, sly. The, the woman in the institution foxy I liked it. kind of hot maybe people now, now we're getting there. A, uh, like a, a spread you know just like what Playboy did you call did your friends and people for me and you know I, I don't have people I have people but I don't have friends, friends in people. people so at people specifically what you did then was you had these women these the, you encouraged them to write poetry or, or write about their experiences and then, and then you set those to music and you brought that to them. Well, you sort of brought theater, it back to them. It's a theater group. You see, I didn't do that. Oh. But it's a theater group you called me. Uh, Story Catchers. See, it's not what work that I'm doing. I just show up once in a while and actually play the stuff in the way that I will be doing tonight. And I go into schools, and you know, uh, the other day I worked with a wonderful ninth grader at Woodlawn. It's a, it's a school that is 100% African American and has 97 Call, uh, high school graduation rate, 97% of the kids graduate and go to college. And yes, yeah. and this is, this is, and, and this is one of the CSO's uh, great partners. Uh, it's the Urban in, uh, Education Institute at the University of Chicago. Tim Knowles, who's a good friend, um, uh, runs it. And Shane Evans is, is the director of all four campuses. And this young lady, Jerlan, wrote a poem, and we just kind of put music to it, worked on it, and I asked her today, we, because we did this thing at Woodlawn earlier today, and says, you know, in between the first time we met, which was about a month ago and now, how have things changed? She says, it's changed so much, and you could see that. Her demeanor, her posture, her, her confidence is, her. apparently I'm told that her work is excellent at school now, and, uh, and, and I'm just so thrilled to be able to do this kind of work because there's a direct correlation between just finding something that's deep inside yourself, putting it out there, and performing it for your peers. And, uh, and that's changed her, a lot of her outlook. And we like to do this over and over and over again. I want to. Um, I'll do it with you too, if you like. I would appreciate that. You know, if you I, write a book, for example, on bad behavior. Yes. You know, for example, we could look at that and you look would, at bad behavior, how it relates to uh, good citizenry. Right. You know, and and so you know, yes, no, yes, no. We could do kind of like a you know, a game, even. It's sort of. Yeah. A quiz, perhaps. Clue. Something. Know, with or without a wombat. <laughs> we always get back to the wombat. Um, I, in, the, in the time we have left, I want to ask you some questions that have been bugging me. Um, one of them is about children in music. Uh, and I wanted to ask you if you think that, the, that all children are potential lovers of music or musicians. I myself was a terrible, failed musician as a child. I attempted the trumpet, and it was an insult to the trumpet and to music, and I gave it up 30 years ago. Um, 
uh, do you think that within every child there's a musician, or does there even need to be one? Well, I think uh, within every child who speaks, language is musical. The intonation of, like, why are you looking at me in this tone of voice? <laughs> That's music. I'll face the other direction. He's giving me the hairy eyeball look. No, no I, I mean, I uh, look, obviously, you know when your daughter says, Daddy, yeah. she wants a favor. Right. And you know you're going to give it to her. Yes. That's musical. That, what, is it really? Yes, absolutely. So when she's wheedling me for snacks, she's practicing her instrument? She could say, Daddy. She's not asking for a favor. True. You've she's, been to my house. I, I, know, your, I know your daughter, <laughs> yes. Uh, no, but I mean, everybody has the ability to communicate all kinds of things in shorthand in very, very specific ways ways. Music is just one of the ways that, that human beings have devised, uh, like dance, like body language, like any of the other art forms that can communicate huge amounts of information in a very short time, so that in a way you can, you can interpret what goes on in an era or in society or in a city when you look at the music and you see what's going on and you really look or listen carefully, you find an awful lot of answers. D do you find it at all difficult, or maybe this is an advantage, so many of us, particularly children, <laughs> consume music in the way we eat food. You know, it just comes to us so easily through iPods or, or podcasts or whatever. I is there ever a difficulty to teach kids that they don't just have to suck this stuff in through their earphones, but they can make it, that they have facility? We had a chef here just now who talked about the joy of making something and how wonderful it is when people get together. I know a lot of young people who've actually started cooking, and I actually know a lot of people who are even people as busy as you, who are as old as you and maybe even of the same height, who, <laughs> who, uh, and possibly, you know, who actually will take time out of their busy days to play an instrument because the sounds, while they're making those sounds, these combinations of sounds, nobody else makes. It's really their inner voice. And so, so that's an attachment to their inner life that the other parts of their busy life don't touch. And so, so that half hour, it's like the golfer who has to go and aim, you know, it's like, and the same thing for the busy adult, and they will play an instrument, and they'll do it, and it really brings them that kind of quietude uh, that is otherwise missing in, you know, their middle-aged lives. I have... No, I, I'm not talking about I, you. I know that. No, no. I mean, you You're are looking the beyond me today. towards someone in the way. Exactly. I'm talking about myself. I understand. Um... I, I, this is a point of personal privilege uh, and I'm, in the few minutes I have left. Uh, a little while ago, I uh, did a favor for my father. My father was on the board of a symphony in the North Shore of Massachusetts and I narrated a performance of Peter and the Wolf. It was really fun. Um, and afterwards, we had a meeting, a reception, and there was a question and answer session and it was all the supporters of the orchestra and they were my parents' generation. They were in their 60s and 70s. And they asked me and the conductor, the musician, with a real kind of almost a plaint, how do we get young people interested in this, in symphonic music, the stuff that they loved so much? They found it so hard to bring in new audiences. They had done so that day with Peter and the Wolf, but they were, didn't know how to do it. They asked me, I didn't know, but you might. So I'll ask you, and I'll tell them what you said. <laughs> I, I, is there a way? You're, you're using me as I a am. conduit? Yes. I really feel cheap. Is Welcome that all right? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. That can be a thrill. Uh, well, I, uh, you know, look, if you came and narrated Peter and the Wolf for me, I would like what you're doing. And I think the whole idea of doing anything, I use the guest and host analogy. If you invite someone to your house and you show them what, you know, how you live, 
why you live the way you do, why you do the things that what's precious to you, why you've you have this clock on the table, how and why it's important to you, how long you've had it. You start from the inside, you start to understand and grow with the habits of having been a guest in someone's house. And it's the same thing with anything, whether it's going to the museum or understanding astronomy or understanding, you know, economics or what's happening in Europe. Uh, you need someone who actually takes you, doesn't make you feel stupid, but rather says, hey, this is actually quite simple. Here are the guidelines. Here's how I think of it. And you're in. It's that simple. But if you say, you know, this is difficult, this is complicated, only very, very tall people can understand things like that, <laughs> you know, you know, that's it. Curtains. So it's, so it's a matter of, of welcome, then? Uh-huh. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? You did. You said that. I didn't really. I just said guest host. Well, um, speaking of welcomes, uh, welcome back to Chicago Yo-Yo Ma. We are thrilled and honored every time you come. And we have brought you, I need to get the name right, a little bit of present, a backing band. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome members of the Chicago Symphony Orchestra as well as the Project Inclusion Ensemble of the Chicago Sinfonietta. Thank you. I hope I didn't rise to too much.